It's no secret that if you want to build wealth, you need to begin investing, but there's a right way to invest and a wrong way to invest. And if you start off your investing career on the wrong foot, that can have a negative financial effect long term. I'm sure we all know of someone who has invested in the stock market and they ended up losing a big part of their investment, if not all of it. And even if you don't know anyone who had this happen to them, it's not hard to find examples of people who lost large amounts of money in the stock market. This doesn't mean you should be scared of investing, but it should tell you that you need to learn what not to do when you are investing, and that's what I will go over in this video. So the first thing you shouldn't do when investing in stocks is become a day trader, especially when you have not been investing for a long time. I'm sure you've seen those advertisements where people say they began with only a few thousand dollars and they turned it into millions of dollars. And this get rich quick scheme is what draws in a huge number of people. However, about 40% of people who begin day trading only trade for about one month. Then 80% quit within the first two years. Then after five years, only 7% remain trading and only 1% of day traders make any real money. But if that's not convincing enough, Charlie Munger, who has been Warren Buffett's longtime business partner, said that teaching young people to actively trade stocks is like starring them on heroin. I'm not denying that there are people out there that make money day trading, but for most people, this is not the way to go when it comes to investing in the stock market. And the first reason most people do not succeed is that it requires good market timing and even the biggest and most successful investors like Warren Buffett do not try to time the market. The thing is, there's many factors that affect the condition of the overall market and the price at which stocks are trading, and it's impossible for any single investor out there to know and understand how these factors are going to affect the price of a certain stock. It very well could be that when you first start off, you get lucky and you make some good trades, but for most people, that luck doesn't last, and what tends to happen is those initial wins makes people overconfident. But eventually, their luck is going to end, and when this happens, they will begin making trades that lose money, but they continue thinking the next trade is where they will double their money, but that never happens, and instead, they lose everything. So when it comes to investing in stocks, most people will be better off investing over the long term and not day trading. Now, the second reason why many investors lose money in the stock market is they don't become educated on the investments they are considering. Investing in general always has some level of risk, but when you jump into an investment without doing research or understanding how the investment works, you are exposing yourself to unnecessary risk. If you simply took time to become educated about the investment you are about to make, you could discover something important that could change how your investment works out. That doesn't mean you have to become an expert on the entire US equity market, but you should understand the basics of investing in stocks and what big factors can impact your investment. For example, you don't want to invest into a stock if you don't know how the business generates revenue, what market it operates in, or how their financial statements look. Maybe during your research, you find out the company is involved in a legal battle because one of their products is known to cause cancer and they never disclosed it. Something like this could really affect the overall business, especially if that product is a major source of revenue. Or it could be that the company has been the leader in their industry, but recently a different company has been taking market share from the company you want to invest in. And this may or may not affect their stock price, but if you invest into that stock without doing your research, you could expose yourself to losses. In this scenario, spending some time doing some research could end up saving you thousands of dollars in losses and it could even end up making you money if you discover the new company is a better buy and has more potential for growth. Then many people begin trading investments they don't fully understand simply because a friend or someone else mentioned it to them. A great example would be trading options and for those of you who don't know what that is, options are contracts that give the holder of those options the right but not the obligation to either buy or sell a certain asset at a predetermined price at or before the contract expires. Now, when used correctly, options can really benefit an investor's portfolio, but when a new investor begins using options and they don't fully understand how they work, they can do more harm than good. Also, whenever you invest, you want to look out for any fees and you must take into account any taxes you will have to pay once you sell your investments. When you begin investing, you have to sign up with a broker where you can make your trades. And if you sign up with any broker without looking into their fees, you could end up paying high trading fees which means less money to invest, but that is not a big issue anymore because now there's multiple brokers who offer commission-free trades. However, this is not the case when you invest in mutual funds. 
because they still have high fees especially when compared to index funds. The fees on mutual funds vary, but let's say you have half a million dollars in your retirement account and you are invested in a fund that charges 1.5%, that means you're paying $7,500 every year just to be invested in that fund. And many mutual funds underperform the market over the long term, so in this case you would be way better off investing into a low cost index fund that only charges 0.04%. Also, something else many new investors don't take into account is taxes. Whenever you sell any of your stock for a profit, you will pay taxes on that gain and you can either be taxed at the income tax rate which happens to be one of the highest tax percentages or you can be taxed at the capital gains rate which is less. For your profit to be taxed at the capital gains rate, you have to own a stock for more than one year. So if a new investor didn't bother doing research on this and they sell their stock right before it's been a year then they could lose hundreds if not thousands of dollars because now they are paying more in taxes. So whether you are buying or selling investments, you should spend some time doing research and gather as much information as you can because that can be the difference between having more money to invest or losing a big part of your investment. The next reason many investors lose money in the stock market is they make investment decisions with emotions and not logic. This is more true when you are just getting started because you have never experienced what it feels like when there is volatility in the market and your investments begin going down in value. So when you make investment decisions with your emotions, you will get nervous and if you sell during a drop in the market, you could sell for less than those investments cost you and once you sell, you lock in any losses. Let's say you invested in some Apple stock and you did plenty of research and that told you Apple was a strong company but one day the share price drops. Now if it's a small drop then chances are it won't bother you much but if it's a big drop and it happens fast you could begin to second guess yourself. But whenever this happens you should analyze if the core business is still doing good and if it is then you should look at this situation as a buying opportunity and you should consider buying more shares not selling. Now it can also be the other way around. For example, if you bought Apple stock 3 years ago and when you did your research, the core business was doing good, but now many things have changed and the core business is not as strong as it once was. But you ignore that and you decide to hold onto the stock because you have some kind of emotional attachment, then that decision can end up costing you a lot especially if the stock continues dropping and you don't sell. In this scenario, your emotions made you hold onto a stock when you should have sold it, and if you would have used logic, then you would have realized it was time to sell that stock and at that point it's possible you could have sold it and still walked away with some decent profit. Or in a worst case scenario, you would have had a small loss but it would have been limited which is way better than losing a majority of your investment. Also when you hear other people talking about different stocks they own and how they made so much money with a certain stock or they talk about how they make money with different investment vehicles, it becomes tempting to follow what they are doing. But this is you being afraid of missing out which is the same as making investment decisions with emotions. And that leads us to the next reason many investors lose money and it's because they don't have their own investment strategy. When you invest without having your own game plan, you will end up investing in a way that doesn't help you achieve your financial goals and you are more likely to jump on bandwagons and follow trends blindly. The thing is, everyone has different investing goals, different levels of risk they're willing to take and different resources, so something that works for someone else might not work for you. So you must develop your own rules for what investments you will make and how you will allocate your assets. For example, if you don't normally invest in IPOs, because you like the company to be public for some time so you have more data for your research but during a family gathering someone begins talking about investing in this new stock that is going to double in price. Someone who doesn't have their own investment strategy will jump on the bandwagon and if the stock they were talking about was Lyft then you would have lost money. Or let's say you are someone who doesn't like taking on risk so in that case investing in individual stocks wouldn't be within your investment strategy but investing in index funds would be because they are considered to be safer investments. So by having your own strategy for what investments you will make and which you won't, you will be better off in the long term because the investments you make will benefit you and help you reach your goals. The next reason investors lose money is they think they can get rich overnight. Many people invest with the intention of making profit right away and they think if they invest $1,000 today, they will have $10,000 tomorrow then $100,000 in a few weeks. But that's not the way investing works, at least not in the long term. Many people say they double their money every few months or even every year and that might be true for a short period of time but that won't be sustainable over the next 10 or 20 years. 
And if for whatever reason they are able to do that, then why aren't they the head of some major bank on Wall Street? The answer is because they are not able to achieve those returns in the long term. Even investors like Warren Buffett don't double their money every year, so don't fall into the trap thinking you will be able to do that. Now yes, everyone is going to have a period of time when their investment goes up by 50 or even 100% in one year. And when this happens, it's hard not to feel like you are some investing genius who can pick all the big winners. But the odds that you get the same results with all of your investments is not very high. For example, if you bought Tesla stock when it was around 100, then you sold it when it was around 800, you might think you will be able to do that with every stock you buy and you will be rich in no time. But the truth is, not every stock you buy is going to have the same result, so don't become overconfident and think your timing will be perfect with every investment. And this also applies to thinking you can give your money to someone else and they will double it for you and make you rich. I mean, just look at what happened with people who invested with Bernie Madoff. A lot of people thought he was this great investor who achieved amazing returns, but it turns out he was running the biggest Ponzi scheme in US history and as a result, many people lost their entire life savings. So if anyone ever comes to you with an investment opportunity that will get you amazing returns and they ask for your money, you should be careful. When you begin investing and you are under the impression you can get rich quick, you will begin taking bigger risks and it might pay off in the beginning, but eventually your luck will end and when this happens, you can find yourself losing large amounts of money and this can set you back financially for many years. So with that being said, those are the main ways you can avoid losing money in the stock market. And if you enjoyed watching or you found this information helpful, it would really help if you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.